Look at that little otter's hut. Drone. Officially got drones in our colonies. So welcome back to another weekly video. So we're going to be showing you things we've been up to this week in our little beekeeping operation. Starting with cleaning some frames. So it's turned into a bit of a beekeeper's diary this. So that we're going to start this week with a bit of frame sterilisation. I've stripped all the wax and all rubbish out the frames. I've got rid of any frames that aren't usable. I'm actually using them to, uh, to fuel this burner here now. So I put this barrel up about five pounds second hand. It's just had the top cut off. Just obviously stacked all the old frames in it, uh, filled it full of water, uh, soda crystals, a bit of bleach, a bit of washing liquid. So that's inside. Just obviously I use frames. They've been soaking for a couple of days and just to brick to weigh them down because obviously wood will float. Uh, and like I say, it's got soda crystals, bleach and a bit of washing up liquid in there. And we're just going to light the fire underneath uh, to get it boiling. Now I looked at electrical means and other means of uh, sterilising these frames on certain beekeeping websites uh, and to be honest I'm not prepared at the moment to be spending 1500 to 2000 pounds uh, on a bit of equipment just to uh, just to do this so this seems to be the way we are channel cheap as chips and uh, just get the job done so there we have it it's taken about two hours on uh, on Woodmark 8, but we've just burnt old scrap pallet wood and things like that just to keep the fire going. Cost me absolutely nothing. So we've managed to get two loads through there. So I'll just show you inside now. Um, we'll let the frames dry in the sun uh, and the breeze and we'll carry on putting foundation in them. Look at that water's hot. So it's Tuesday, glorious, glorious weather today. It's about 10, 11 degrees C. Uh, so we've just come down to the Mason area. We've just been to another one down the road. Uh, and literally all we're doing today, no inspections, anything like that. We're just checking for colony size and stores. So if they need any extra feed, we're just going to put liquid on from now on. Uh, and if they need a bit of pollen, we're going to top those up with some pollen patterns as well that we made. Just had a little walk around these nooks. And to be honest, there's not a lot of pollen coming in at all. I've seen on other people's videos and uh, social media posts and things like that. Um, mostly down south where the pollen is, uh, is coming in in abundance. We're yet to see any decent amounts coming in at all. So uh, I'm obviously going to substitute that with a bit of our own Ultra B. Uh, just to keep these girls going. I'll get suited up and like I say, if they need any extra space, I'm just going to add an extra brew box and then a, uh, a syrup feeder on top. So there you go. I will show you our good ones and our bad ones. But these girls are probably over a good five frames. Obviously once... Uh, that queen comes into lay proper, these will explode. They'll, uh, they'll want room in no time at all. So there we go. Another prime example of another nuke that could do with a little bit of extra room. Just give it a couple of weeks and these girls will explode. Again, a bit of pollen, feed her back on and then these will get syrup from now on. So it's properly warmed up here now and as you can see with the amount of bee flight, it... Uh, the girls are making the most of it. You can just see the odd bit of natural pollen coming in, but not a lot at all. So anything that's needed it has had a brew box extension. Uh, they've all had another pollen patty and they're all on syrup now. So um, hopefully now they'll thrive on and, and kick on this spring. Different site, different scenario. So these bees are bringing in plenty of pollen, no doubt about that. So they're actually looking really good for natural pollen. So there's only a couple here that we've actually bothered putting extra pollen patches on. 
we're just leaving them to it. We're just gonna come along, top up the fondant, and then these girls should be good to go. So these colonies we decided were of a certain size. Oh my god, look at that. Drone. Is he still there? Officially got drones in our colonies. That's scurry this early in the season. So here's Vic showing off her new suit that she uh, picked, freshly picked up from the beekeeping show the other week. They're probably taking down half the syrup, haven't they? And they're up there in it now. So again, just like the uh, the nukes at the other side, we're just checking these for size. If they need any um, any extra space up top, then we're giving it them. Peel that uh, cream ball back off. So they're on every frame. So these will probably get a brew box extension. So I'm not too worried about that pond there. If it's going a bit manky, we'll just take that off because there's plenty coming in now. We'll just give these girls a bit of extra space. The fact that I've just seen drones in uh, in another brew box concerns me a little bit. So that even more so. Another reason to give them that extra boob box. That extra boob box. Not boob, not boob box, is it? Again, up in the feeder. It's left off with that. So we've actually found one second. So we've so we've actually found a smaller colony. So so people don't think I'm having you off and uh, just showing you every big colony. This one's probably only on. I reckon they're Vic four frames. So this is on the certainly on the smaller side uh, as an average compared to the rest of our colonies. So we ain't going in there and having a look. Uh, also, we're not sure whether these guys are going to make it or. Um, they're just slow starters, but again, we'll close them up, make sure they've got some feed, and uh, when we come to first inspections, we're sure to find out. So, there you go, that's obviously two, di so that's obviously two different types of pollen coming in there. Not the daft. So, in fact, on the driveway there was all sorts of uh, hedgerows and cherry blossom and everything in uh, in blossom. So, whatever it is, these girls have found it. <laughs> So this one, without doubt, is a dying colony, a failing colony. So if we look, if we've got bees on two frames there, I think it's safe to say they're done for, unfortunately. So I've got to be honest, on the whole, I'm quite happy with this site. Quite a few known double brood that needed the extra space. It's the one thing with um, supplementary feeding of pollen and putting syrup on early, although that was a gamble because it was still quite chilly. Uh, but obviously we, are, we have an aim in mind with this rapeseed. Um, is, obviously the gamble is that they're now getting quite sizable, some of these colonies. So like I said, double brood, uh, we'll just have to keep us eyeing them now because as you've seen, there's drones in the some of the colonies as well. Um, and if the weather is as mild as, as it's promising, then uh, we'll have to keep an eye on for swarming. But we have our own methods to uh, try and get around that anyway so um, hopefully now the uh, this rapeseed kicks on and then the uh, the flow starts in April and we're, we're good to go.
One thing I've noticed with this site, we've got uh, what looks like a potential couple of losses, whether that's a site specific thing, conditions, uh, temperatures, or whether it's just coincidence with a couple of queens. Um, I did make quite a few late splits, um, but that said, I think those two were production colonies last year. So as most of you know, that can happen th through a number of things. So. Um, it, I mean, it is what it is. We'll just move on and uh, if they do die up, we'll clean those boxes. Uh, what I'm not a fan of is nursing uh, failing colonies. Uh, I've done it in the past. Um, it comes to the rapeseed and they're on two or three frames and you're nursing them and nursing them and nursing them and they never do anything. So you, sometimes it's easier just to cut your losses, shake those bees out, be done with them and then move on to the next colonies. And... <laughs> So I've just come up to the racing staples apiary. So these girls were from a couple of nukes I made last year just to start them off. And obviously they've done well over winter. There's still uh, two or three frames of, uh, of stores in there. But I'd fill it full of um, dummy balls last year just to fill the gaps in because they weren't really big enough to win a a full size hive but uh, a little bit too big for a nuke so I just uh, just spaced it out with some uh, with some dummy balls but you can as you can see they've they've done all right they've gone in size so again that's per the others bit of pollen uh, they will get a bit of syrup now from one of these abello feeders that fit ideally purposely in that gap uh, and we'll just bring these on now. Mm -hmm. Smash that fondant. I'll take down here and follow that pollen patty. Just a tiny bit in there left. These guys are just a little bit smaller. And again, loads and loads of stores in there, so I'll just take these dummy balls out and replace them with uh, foundation. So when they expand, they've got plenty of room. Absolutely stunning here today though. 
be nice sat out here or uh, tending to the bees in summer when it's gloriously hot. <laughs> So thanks for tuning in for another weekly video. I said we've been busy all week, mostly feed. So if you follow this, seeing what we do uh, is an inspiration or an idea for your own hives, make sure you top up that feed or check that feed with fondant. Should have quite a bit of natural pollen coming in now. Uh, another job for this week or for the coming weeks is make sure you have enough spare equipment. You don't want to let those bees get in front of you. You want to make sure you've got plenty to hand. So frames, nuke boxes, things like that, if you're intending on making any splits. So for us, we're pretty much boxed off for the next two weeks with feed. Uh, it's just a case of getting those odd jobs done. So we've got market starting this Sunday, so we've been doing a lot of jar prep. If you've got any comments or any questions, make sure you add them in the comments box. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed already, please do so. It's absolutely free, costs absolutely nothing, but helps us out massively and helps to push the channel a little bit further. And if there's any female beekeepers watching or aspiring beekeepers, happy International Women's Day. So until next week, keep busy. And I'll see you again.